Hey and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about all the cool stuff that we can do with string interpolation in Swift. Let's start by simply reminding ourselves what string interpolation is in Swift. So you can see I've just pasted a line where we use string interpolation. So it's this part of the line. String interpolation allows us to put inside a literal string an expression that will be evaluated and then injected into the string. It's kind of the same thing than appending or concatenating strings, except that we don't need to use methods, the plus operator, or anything like that. The syntax is very clean. And as you can see here, I use string interpolation to inject into a literal string the result of the computation two times two, which is four. And thus, after the interpolation has been evaluated, the string that is computed is this one. Okay, so that's the basic way to use string interpolation. But now, since we five, we can actually customize string interpolation and implement our own ways of doing a string interpolation. So let's see how it could be useful. So let's say that I have some business objects in my code. For instance, here I have a user, and this user has two fields, a first name and a surname. Okay, and let's say I want to use string interpolation in order to interpolate a user into a string. I would like to be able to take this user and just interpolate it into a string and have the interpolation mechanism just interpret the value of the user and create a string that makes sense when we want to interpolate a user into a string. Here, I would like to have the string my name is, then the first name, then the surname. So how can we do it with string interpolation? So if you want to implement a custom string interpolation in Swift, you need to extend a specific type. You need to extend the type called string dot string interpolation. This is where we are going to implement all the interpolation method that the compiler will then be able to use in order to perform our own custom interpolation. So inside this extension, if you want to implement our own custom interpolation, we are going to need to implement a method. So I'm going to paste the implementation and we will go over it step by step. So first, you can see here that the name of the method is set by convention by Swift. So it must be append interpolation. And then we have the argument list. And this is where we will be able to match what we give in the interpolation with the actual method. And as you can see, the argument list is just as we would expect. We take a user as argument with an explicit external name for the argument. This way, when we use our custom interpolation, we will be able to use this external name, which will make our code much more readable. So now let's take a look at what's happening inside the method. So you can see that inside we are actually calling an instance method from string interpolations. We are calling another overload of append interpolation. And this method, we are calling it with an argument. And in this argument, we are providing a string. And inside this string, we use string interpolation, but this time with basic types, so with strings. And using these two interpolation, we are able to interpolate the first name and the surname of the user into a string. And now that we have implemented this method, you can see that this line, now it builds, and if we run the code, it's going to actually take this interpolation, turn it into a call to this method, which will then result in this string being produced when we try to interpolate a user into a string. So we've achieved our goal of being able to interpolate any type into a string which is already pretty useful because using this string interpolation, we can also wrap some APIs and we are going to try and implement a wrapper around the localizable API. So let's say that in our project, we already have a localizable.strings file. And in this file, it has this content. We have the key welcome.scream.greetings associated with the value hello and then a format for a string. And we would like to be able to localize our strings using string interpolation, meaning that we would like to be able to have this syntax. So as you can see, it would be a rather nice syntax to do string interpolation because it's very encapsulated. It feels very swifty. We don't need to make calls to legacy function like ns localize string. We can just do a string interpolation. With a first argument, we give the key that we want to use in our localizable.string file. And then we can provide the subsequent argument as a variadic list of arguments. Here we are providing the first name of the user. OK, so how can we implement this using string interpolation? Well, just as before, we are going to start by doing an extension on string.string interpolation. So inside this extension, we need to implement the function that will be called when we use our custom interpolation. 
So just like before, we need to call it happen interpolation because that's the name Swift wants us to use by convention. Then we need to set its argument list. So the first one is easy, is going to be the key. So it's a string. And the second one, since we want to be able to deal with format, we need to take a variadic list of arguments. So the way to do it in Swift is the following. We use the type cvar arg and then put this free little dot to say that we actually take a variadic list of arguments. Now let's go to implementing the method. So first we need to retrieve the value in the localizable.string file for the given key, then format it and finally inject it into the string. So let's start with the first part. So as you can see here, I am calling the function nslocalizedString. I give it the key I have received as its argument. Then I take the result and using the init from string that takes a format and the variadic list of arguments, I format my localized string with any argument that might be passed to my function. Now we only need to inject the result that is stored in the variable localized into the string. And to do it, we call the method happen literal and give it the value of the variable localized. And that's it. We've implemented our custom interpolation. And now that we've implemented this method, our goal syntax is going to work just as expected, meaning that we will be able to localize string using a custom string interpolation. So that's all for this video. As always, if you've enjoyed it, you can give a like. If you have intention to use what I've shown in this video, or if you have already used it and you have some comment, well, please let me know in the comments. And you can subscribe to stay tuned for more content. Thank you.